my name is Brendan and I'll be going through the camper and kind of doing a walk around uh, with you. Uh, we'll start with underneath here. This will be your fresh uh, water tank drain. It'll be right underneath there. You'll see the valve there. You will want to shut that if you do want to fill up your fresh water tank. Um, that'll be right there. And you'll have a decal here showing you that as well. This here will be your city water connection. So if you go and have a hookup, a hose hookup, you'll just thread that right into there and you won't have to worry about using your water pump as long as you have water pressure there. This here is to fill your water tank. You'll just fill that up right there and water will shoot out when it is completely filled. Um, if you are using your fresh water tank, you are gonna to wanna to use your water pump to pressurize the water. This here is gonna be your water heater. Um, it is uh, a DSI water heater, so it is direct spark ignition, so you won't need to come out here and light it yourself. Uh, this here is gonna be your cap. It is an inch and an eighth, or actually it'd be an inch and a sixteenth, not an inch and an eighth. Um, that'll go right here, that'll close that off. After it is closed off, you are going to want to turn on your water, um, whether that be turning your water on on your city water connection or turning on your water pump. It will start to fill up your tank, but it won't be able to fill up completely because there's gonna be an air pocket on the inside. To get rid of that, you can do it two different ways. You can use your pressure release valve right here, and you can bleed it out until water actually shoots out of here, or you can go inside and turn on the hot water faucet and just wait. Um, it's gonna spit and sputter for a while, and then uh, after it comes out of full stream, you'll know that it is completely filled, and then you can turn on uh, your heating element, those will be in the bathroom. You'll have a electric side and a gas side, um, but you do want to make sure that there is filled before you start that, otherwise it can burn up your heating element. So, In the front here, this little light right here, that there is just for your tire uh, monitor sensors, um, that there is your signal, um, but I'll show you that on the inside of the refrigerator. Um, you can go and install that as well. This here is going to be uh, your battery disconnect, you'll have it on and off right here. If you are hooked up to uh, your 30 amp, your sure power, you are going to want to have that in the on position if you want it to charge your battery. Um, basically, the only time that we usually um, turn it off is in storage. You do have a group 24 battery that you have added up front here. And then you will have a 20 pound LP tank. That'll be right on the inside here. And then you'll just have the valve right down there. If you pop open this cap on the top, this here is for your override um, on your power tongue jack. And then you'll have a light right here. And then your extend and retract. I do not want to extend and retract it right now um, because we do have the stabilizer jacks down. Um, those jacks are for stabilizing, not for leveling. So you'll try to get level side to side um, using wheel chalks, and then you'll use your power tongue jack for your front to back, and then you'll put your stabilizer jacks down and just put uh, pressure on it just to stabilize the unit. Then on the inside here, right here to the right, you're gonna have an adapter and that there is for your stabilizer jacks. Uh, you can put an impact on that. And then you do have a light switch in here. Um, this here is a three-way switch, so you'll have a on, a um, motion sensor, and then an uh, off. So you'll have three different settings right here that you can choose between. And then for the awning, if you want to angle it down so you have your water shut off the side, You'll just pull this down and that will shed off. Uh, you do want to have it in the up position when you come to roll it in. We'll go ahead and roll that in.
And after that is in, that will allow you to open your door further. And then you can also go and lift up your steps on the inside. If you do not have your awning in, it will catch on the door. So that's why you'll want to have your awning ran in if you do lift up your steps. And then we'll just have that latch that right on the side there. And the door here, it will be on a friction hinge, but you will have your screen door. That'll be right there. And then we'll have your exterior door. And then for your griddle, um, you will have an LP hose that will quick connect right to the back and then it'll click connect right below here with a valve um, to turn your gas on and off down there. And then you can just go and pop these pins out on either side and this will just slide right off and this will go in your front storage compartment. That'll just quick connect right to the back here This is just to set your um, cooking things on top of. It's gonna slide out as well. And then on the inside, underneath um, where your table will be, under on the right side, there's going to be a quick connect to connect your outside a hose right there, and you'll have a high pressure right there. Wheels, as far as lug nuts, they do recommend that you tighten those at 50 miles, 100 miles, and at 200 miles uh, at 100 foot pounds of torque. And then you'll see the little uh, tire pressure sensors uh, right here. Um, on the furnace, we do recommend um, getting a screen cover to go over the top of this. Um, if you are in a place where there's a lot of mud doppers and wasp, um, just protect from that. And then this here will be your outside outlet, this will be your 110 power. And then you will have a cable connection on this side. You have a TV out here. And then this here will be a storage compartment. And I did forget uh, to unlock that. Um, I'll be right back. I have a key here. Thank you. Mm -hmm. right inside here and come into the back it's here you will be able to go and pull out and then you can sit put your sewer hose right in the inside there you will have a ladder on the back to get up on top of the roof as well um, they usually recommend that twice a year you go over it and check the seals. So that would be going around here, just making sure there's no voids or anything in the silicone. The sides just use clear silicone, and then the roof will use a self-leveling die core. And then for the back, the travel rack, it is rated at 200 pounds. 
and the spare tire um, weighs about 45 to 50 pounds so you have about um, 150 pounds um, that you can add to the back here as well. And then on this side, this will be where your 30 amp hookup will be at. And you'll have your satellite and cable connection. If you have on-site um, satellite or cable, you can hook it up right there. And then coming down here below, you will have uh, low point drains right under here. And at the end of the walkthrough, I'll go over uh, when you will be using those uh, low point drains. And then right here, you'll have your black tank uh, dump valve and then your gray tank dump valve. And you'll have a sewer cap that will just go right over the top of this. And then right over here, this is the black tank flush. So if you are at a campsite, you are dumping your tanks and you want to go and clean out your black tank, um, it does help reduce the smell um, on your tank. It's basically a sprayer on the inside of the tank, helps wash everything down and out. Um, we do recommend using it, but if you have no access to it, it's not like it needs to be used. But if when you are using it, you are gonna wanna have your black tank valve opened Otherwise, it is going to fill up your black tank um, and fill up into the toilet area. So um, just be careful with that. Always make sure your black tank valve is open when you are using your black tank flush. And then this here will be the slide out. Um, there's not much room to get around here. There's not much maintenance on it. If it does squeak um, at all, just take spray silicone and spray it in the tracks. And that usually takes care of any squeaking. So with that, we'll go on the inside. start in here with the shower. Um, you'll have your screen door right here. And that'll just latch into place right here. And then up top here, you'll have your vent. You just twist your knob, open it up, and then you'll have a little switch over here to turn your exhaust fan on. This will be your switch for your bathroom lights. And then you'll have a little toilet paper holder right here. And then right down here, you're gonna have multiple switches. Here is to uh, heat your fresh water tank, your gray water tank, and your black tank. So if it gets down right close to freezing, you are gonna wanna turn those on, make sure your tanks don't freeze up. And then this here is gonna be your monitor. So if you hit your gray, tank your black tank button it'll show you exactly where you're at battery is full charged and then this here is going to be your gas side of your water heater electric side of your water heater and then your water pump to turn that on and you will have some storage in here as well And at the bunks, we'll have a bunk ladder. Set right into there. And the bunks do have USB ports on the top and bottom bunk. This will be your refrigerator. It is a 12 volt refrigerator, so it will uh, only run off of 12 volt. Um, but if you are hooked up to your Sure Power, it is going to convert it over to 12 volt power. So 
as long as you're hooked up to that, you'll be good to go. And it'll also run off your battery. Um, but that'll be right there. In the bottom of this door here, you're going to have your TV remote, your radio remote, and then this is where your tire monitor display is at. Um, these here are just your TV legs, so if you do want to remove your TV and you want to set it on a table, you can use that as well. And then your manuals and things are on the bottom drawer. And then this here will be to set your temperature on your refrigerator or turn it off. Up here, you'll have your light and then your exhaust fan. And then you'll have the stove top here. This will just fold up. Back. Then you do have a cutting board here. That you can put down. And then when it comes to the dishes, um, you can go and set your water down here. And when it comes to rinsing, you can set your plates right in these slots here to dry off. And then you'll have storage right down here. You'll have your microwave here. And then you'll have your back system. Um, if you do lift up on this, that automatically starts your back. And then you'll have your on and off switch here. And this is if you want to hook up your hose. And your hose will we'll show you where your hose will be at uh, here in a second. Your TV will be right here. And you can go and lift this off and remove your TV and put the legs on it and have it outside as well. This is going to be your thermostat to control everything. Just press and hold on it. That'll be for your fan. And then if you click it again, your power button, it'll go to dry, cool, and then heat. You just go right through there. I will go ahead and run it on heat just for a second. I have to go ahead and turn it up so the heat kicks in. And after you do turn this off, your furnace is going to run for about one to three minutes um, just so that it cools down it'll go through a cool down cycle and then you will have storage right under here and this is your box for your tv Your table does go down and right in the center, and then this here will convert into a bed area. This is where your vac system will be in. This will be your 30 amp cord. 
then you'll have your spray hose with your quick connect for on the outside. This here is an override handle uh, for your stabilizer jacks. And this here is an override handle for your power tongue jack. And then you will have an extra cap in here for your sewer hose or your sewer dump on the outside. And then you will have LP carbon monoxide detector down there. And then you will have a smoke detector uh, right above the bed area as well. And with this one, it does have a nine volt battery in it. The reason for that is when you do turn on the furnace the first time, um, that new burnt off smell will usually set that off. So you can just go take the battery out and just wait till it is aired out. Um, and then it'll stop chirping at you. But the uh, LP carbon monoxide detector, that there is wired in, so as long as you have power, um, that will be in working condition. This, out, and down. The bed area will fold down right there, and you'll have storage along the top here. And you do have a fire extinguisher here on the sides. You'll have USB ports and electric outlets on both sides as well. And this will fold out latch into place. You can add more counter top area right here. And then this here will be a bottle opener right on the end. This here will be your solar controller. Um, it is good for up to a hundred watts of solar. Um, and then that'll be your battery, your voltage. Then interior lights will be here. Porch light, which is on the outside, your amber light. Then your awning light will be right there. Slide room, extend and retract. And your awning, extend and retract. This Vingard um, switch right here, that there is not in working order, that there is um, an option that you can add um, to get a Wi-Fi uh, extender put in. So that'll be right there. And that will be it for um, now. Um, I will be going over in another video of the winterizing process. Uh, we'll keep that separate. So thank you. And when we go to winterize, so we'll just come under here and we'll open these up. So just put those straight down as far as the valves. Um, those are your low point drains. And then we'll go on to the inside. And we'll want to remove the bed mattress. And we'll open this up and this will be right on the top and we'll come down here and there's going to be two valves right here so these valves it is in the winterized position right now which basically creates this loop and then just goes out because when you are winterizing you do not want to have any rv antifreeze in your water heater tank so you'll flip these 
bypass valves straight down. Uh, if you go to dewinterize and you want water in your water heater tank, you're going to want to flip these valves towards your water heater tank. So that'll be right there. And then you'll close this off and then you'll want to go on the outside to the outside of your water heater tank and there is a white cap. You're going to want to take that off, but before you take that off, you're going to want to hit the pressure release valve. Make sure that that uh, is uh, good to go. Make sure there's no pressure in the tank so that your cap doesn't just fly off. After you have that drain to your water heater is winterized. And then to winterize the lines, you'll take this hose here and you'll put it into your RV antifreeze jug. And then you'll flip this valve. And this valve right now is in the winterized position. So it is towards this hose, what we call the pigtail. Um, that will make so when you turn on your water pump, it'll be sucking from this hose, not your hose that comes down here. This hose goes to your fresh water tank. So it'll switch from sucking out of here to here. Um, and then you'll go uh, into the bathroom and you'll turn on your water pump and it'll suck out of this hose and you'll just go around to each individual thing do the hot and cold side um, till you have pink RV antifreeze coming out and then you're going to want to go and do your toilet and outside shower those are the main forgotten things so just make sure you do those two and then we usually recommend dumping about eight ounces of antifreeze down each um, drain or p-trap so the p-trap fills up but that'll be it for winterizing your camper.